That's cool. Um, so yeah, price. I caught an early entry and then price shot shot back up to our entry. And I don't think it crossed it, but I think it came like one pip within it. So either way, though, <clears throat> this is what I be trying to illustrate to everybody is that, you know, I think I mentioned this before that, you know, when price is in a zone, even when we're looking at like opportunities to jump in the market for ourselves, price is in a zone, try to look for the zone instead of just restricting yourself to the entry, because if people either set an alert or did like a pending order, the market probably didn't pick up their order here. But you know what I'm saying? Like still, like it still goes through the functions of like break and retest. So this was the break letting us know what it wanted to do. This was the retest over here. So I do expect SP to transition and make its move all the way back down here. This is actually in a thousand pit move. Um, if we get all of it, but I'll still be me personally. Cause again, Sunday, Monday. Y'all kind of know my thought process behind that is like kind of, you know, get in, get out. So you see the opportunity for previous lows that the market starts breaking. You can use these as potential exits out of the market. And then, you know, as the market starts breaking and retesting, you can use those as opportunities to re-enter. You see what I'm saying, guys? Like, Like the market's coming down, market's coming down. And all those times you could have got in, you know what I'm saying? Hypothetically, we're not saying this exact sequence, but hypothetically, 171 pip move right there. 84 pip move. You know what I'm saying? If you if you if you were getting in and getting out possibly 164 pit move, you know what I'm saying, with each sequence. So that's what I'm going to be looking to do as, you know, we head down to this entire entry. Um, I know many of you scalp, so y'all can attest to jumping in and in and out of the market with a pathway, jumping in and out of the market with a pathway will pretty much uh, uh, give you more money <laughs> at the end of the day, right? So USD Swiss franc, that's what I wanted to talk about based off the news that I was talking about you guys, with you guys earlier today around, what was that, like six o'clock? I don't know, like six o'clock. So <clears throat> with the credit SUSI, I think that's what it's called, SUI. I forgot how to pronounce it, but um, the bank that had this issue along with Silicon Valley so the UBS, that's the Switzerland bank. This is what we care about. This is the information that we care about. The Switzerland bank, um, they said that they were going to buy that other bank, right? The Credit Su Sui. <laughs> I, I'm going to figure out how to pronounce it soon, all right? Anyway, they, they decided and they finalized buying it today. So my thought process on the market is that I'm looking at specifically the U.S. dollar and the Swiss, Swiss franc, right? So the only thing I could find or I can pull up was, you know, you guys, I use indexes to kind of figure out specifically what that currency is doing. So the only thing I could personally find was this, which I think is giving me the viewpoint on what I want to see based off of the Swiss franc. It says futures, so I'm assuming it still has some type of attachment solely to um, Switzerland's uh, currency, which is a Swiss franc. So looking at it looking at it I already decided that this market is consolidating all right so this market is overall consolidating and what i'm looking at is i'm looking at a break and recess of this market but the only thing that i saw oh could y'all not see the only thing that i saw that you know left me alarm was is the market going to try to uh, attack this gap right here that was made right so what I'm looking at, if we get the dollar to one, I do think that the dollar is going to have some type of rebound in order to decide to continue to um, sell off. Well, let's actually look at the dollar and then come back to this, right? So there was negative news surrounding the dollar. There was negative news surrounding the dollar for 
whatever reason, because of this action that happened um, with that bank, that credit bank, right? So with the UBS coming in to pretty much be like the savior and stuff, pretty much blame is being shifted on the United States because of this happening, right? So obviously that's going to have a negative impact towards the currency. I just don't know if that data is going to be priced in right now. I mean, based off the dollar right now, you see that it's selling. I do expect like some type of rebound. So with that being said, the dollar actually created a gap as well. So as we've been seeing what's been going on with the market, every time the market has been creating these gaps, what has been doing to us has been running away from us and then deciding to come back only to continue in that direction. I think just because these are the gaps that are produced um, as the market is opening for Sunday, I think what's going to happen is that the market is going to finish its retesting and the market is actually going to continue being bullish to capture that gap and then, you know, create some type of uh, uh, some, 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 ah, <laughs> some type of structure in the market to continue trending down. I don't know how high up, but I do see that we had this gap up here. So I can see the dollar returning as high as this. So I can see somewhere in this general area, the dollar returning. What is that? Price of 104, 469, 104, 469. So I'm not saying that that's where the dollar is heading right now, but because of that gap, um, more than likely the dollar will try to come back up here. If not, great resistance all the way back up here. What would that do to USD Swiss franc, right? And the reason why I'm focused on it is because anytime I see anything that deals with like the economy, and they're talking about it specifically on Bloomberg. I see that that market can uh, 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 be a big payout. You know what I'm saying? And that's why my focus this week is going to be on the Swiss franc and the United States. Well, the U.S. dollar against the Swiss franc. So right now it's consolidating. Um, I am looking forward to continue being bullish just because of the sequence. So my thought process behind this was basically solely this pattern. This pattern, every time... Every time this pattern has been produced, which it's not even, it's not even the, um, it's not a bullish flag or a bearish flag, and it's not, uh, what is it, a wedge, a wise, a rising or a falling wedge. I don't know what pattern this is, but every time we've seen it in the market, it's always impacted the market in a bullish direction. And as you see right here, because this was probably like, yeah, towards Wednesday going into Friday, the market started moving sideways. Y'all know my thought process behind consolidation after the market has made a move. Now, after we have this move, I do believe that we're still bullish from this market and we are producing um, a, a potential bullish flag, but I do still need to see some possibility of the market uh, breaking here. So I'm in right now. If you guys want, use this information and wait for the market to actually peak up here and then decide to jump in. But I'm in right now because I jumped in at a lower position. So I was just waiting for a further confirmation to actually get like a clearance on break and reach us. But take real quick, guys. Y'all use this information. I'm not going to push it out in the chats. This is just, you know, when we do weekly outlook, we just take the trade based off of uh, what we're seeing right here. And we get a break. That's your clear to jump in. I'm going to put an alert, too. So that's 9-2. The entry is... 0.92715 or 0.92714, whichever, I mean, entry you want to put at that. And my stop loss is 92385. And I'm looking for 80, 83 pips. So that's 934, I mean, 93547. So normally when you're looking at this type of move, it probably will take like a day and a half, maybe two days um to actually impact so if it's not something that you want to stay in because we're going into sunday and the monday um i wouldn't i would recommend just getting your pips and get out uh other than that this is the move that i'm looking for because the major move that i'm looking for is for the dollar to come down against the swiss franc i just think that it's going to decide to push up a little bit higher um, in order to come down and then that'll be the major selling move because I do believe that the Swiss franc is going to be that news that happened what I was looking for is a positive effect against it because the fact that they bought that um, bank out of out of pretty much their turmoil so I knew that was going to have a positive effect 
for Swiss franc just in general. Basically, if there was another Swiss franc bank, that was two banks combining into one, um, you know, more equity to go around, yada, yada, basically, right? So I'm looking at the positive impact for this currency once that data is priced in. So we're just looking at regular structure, uh, what the market should do. Anytime we get news, remember, you still got to pay attention to the market, guys, and not just react off of what the news is telling you. That's where most people um, fall into a trap because the news is normally, it's kind of like breaking retest. You know, you have your break, the market is telling you what it's trying to do, and then it does it later on. So news does the same thing. So I'm not saying jump in haphazardly. That means you should do the opposite of news, but just be mindful when we get this type of news outlets and we're looking for um, conditions in the market to, to, show us based off of what we anticipate the market to be showing us you just kind of want to you know just be a little bit more patient but understand that the news isn't going to give you direct confirmation of what it's going to do right it right then and there because that information hasn't yet been funneled in into the market right all right so yeah s p is doing well and like i said that's going to be my focus for the entire week I know that uh, we have, what do we have? We have FOMC, let me check. Matter of fact, let me check the news outlets real quick, guys. Y'all still can't hear me this whole time? Y'all can hear me, right? Yes. Oh man, <laughs> out of band part two. All right, I'm on, you know, my favorite, my FX book. So hold on, let me switch. Where are we at? All right, so if y'all can see my screen, this is all the news that's coming out. I think I have mine filtered, so we may not see nothing, but no, I think I got all news this time. So let's see what's going on. Swiss Frank has news six hours at 4 a.m. That may be that selling opportunity that I was looking for. Now, what's important is this week, obviously, um, don't be in the market during this time. I would, I would even say don't be in the market past, um, 10 o'clock this day. Don't be in the market past 10 o'clock this day, just for, just because it's like, it's too volatile guys. And you rather just see what they're going to say, especially with it being FOMC, you rather see what they're going to say versus just jumping into the market blindly. Right. So I'm going to wait until after I see what Jerome Powell and these guys are talking about. You normally get a better sense of the market after it calmed down, after the market reset, you know, after you get all this craziness. Now, there are some traders that, you know, trade the news when this stuff comes out. If you're one of those, then knock yourself out. But if you know you're still like, you know, new or a little green to the market, like I'll kind of wait, wait and even it doesn't even matter across the board any trader i would say it's still even better to be patient because you get kind of clear indication of what the move is after these guys start to stop talking um after the market resets right you can still watch it like still watch it to kind of gain like what the data is being presented but anything that they say is going to trigger the market in any direction and man if you're in the wrong entry lower entry higher entry than you're supposed to be whatever you're trading yo you could find yourself like taking a losing trade for no reason um or a winning trade going into a losing trade real fast <laughs> real fast yo so that's what i wanted to show you guys as far as like the news um like i said my thing that i'm gonna be focusing on is a swiss franc not to mention i didn't even know that they had this okay yeah I really think there's going to be a lot of buying and selling opportunities just from um, the movement of what that USB bank just did. 
um, by buying uh, Susi or Sui, whatever it's called. But you guys get that. So that's what I'm looking at. Um, I don't really have nothing else. Oh, yeah, oil, 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 oil. Hold on. I know y'all been seeing the gas prices, right? I mean, they ain't been like going down like a lot, but enough. So I'm expecting oil to rise up, right? So just based off of my fibs, and we'll go into detail like later on, guys, this week going into fibs, but I did have a fib on here. Now, the one thing that I did mention is that you can't really use a fib in a ranging market, but you still can drop fibs to like candles and stuff. So if it gives you a high and low, you can still use that, but just know that, how can I explain this better? Basically, this would be the end of this range. So with me using it, I can see that I can clearly see that if I draw like a line, like a new high and low has been made in a time period, right? So I can use this information to fib up. And well, one, like I said, after consolidation, when I'm when I'm personally looking at con consolidation, the move after consolidation, I mean, the move before consolidation normally directs me to the pathway that the market is still trying to move. So I believe that since we've been selling after this consolidation, I mean, before this consolidation, that's where we're going to continue to go. We're just going to um, decide to come back higher up, which would be the 7A6, a reversal zone. Um, I think the momentum is super high for oil going down. I know that they were talking about it on Bloomberg not too long ago, where um, I think Leah mentioned a young lady talking about you know, the opportunity to buy oil. Again, guys, what do we see with news? When you, just off of that example, so she was talking about buying oil, right? If you can afford to buy oil, like hang in there. I wouldn't tell anybody to necessarily like hang in there if you could invest in oil, try to find it at the best buying price possible. So anytime we get news, when that news came out, most people probably jumped in and was like, I'm going to buy oil. And it's like, well, the market is probably just going to push down more just because it realizes that there's more buyers in this market. So I'm expecting oil, me personally, I'm expecting oil to make a bounce somewhere around like 51. Man, this is more of like a monthly lookout than a weekly lookout, right? Did I have it go to 51? So it definitely has to break this zone first, clearly, you know, structure. Um, so after it breaks this zone, I would believe the next zone that we are looking at is like 51. 51 would be like a previous, yeah, somewhere within the previous high. Yeah, I think I, think I was just looking at this previous lows, these lows over here, and there was something. I know there was something over here that drew me to that attention, but that would be the next level that I'm looking at oil to come at before it starts rebounding. Um, I don't know if oil is ready to buy, but I know that the way oil popped down to like zero that one time, that's not happening again. <laughs> that's not happening, man. If you was on the better end of that, you saw what, what money you could have made or what money people are making who are selling oil but that's not happening. I can only see it coming back down, like maybe as far as like $20, but I don't even want to push that. Um, I doubt that. I think that this area of general, like, you know, because last, last year or when was it? Was it last year? Wherever oil bounced up from, it was either last year or the year before it was like $65 that oil bounced up from and got extremely bullish from. What's this? Let me see. This is... Yeah, 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 last year, last December. So I was looking to buy oil around 60, uh, I think like $60 flat. It came to like y'all see 62, 62. So um, I missed the opportunity because I was looking for an exact price at 60. This is exactly what I'm talking about. Like sticking to the zones, sticking to the zone. So Oil is almost back at the price that it bought at, bought at um, 2001, 2021 in December. So that structure being created 
that could present another buying opportunity. But I think that, like I said, I think that oil is going to want to drive a little bit lower um, just to knock people out and make investors a little scared and then pop up, you know, around 51, 50. I, I don't know if that's exact, but 51, 50, anything lower will just be structure being made. Um, I can't guess that far, but just based off of what we're looking at with price action, um, it's definitely heading to the zone that it bought out pretty much the past, yeah, last year, last year twice. So we'll see if it decides to turn this structure into resistance once it breaks it. Um, but like I said, if we're looking at another buying opportunity, that should be around like 51. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much what I got for this week, guys. Y'all got anything y'all were looking at to, that y'all want me to look at? Um, like I said, my focus was just going to be S&P showing us some love right now. And USD switch franc. And like I said, I'm not pushing that out. So let's see. Yeah, it's selling right now. So I'm going to have to analyze that. But like I said, if you guys didn't jump in already, then wait for that break up here. I think this is just a fake out. Wait for that break up here and then, you know, do what y'all do. I had um I had jumped in GBP USD earlier um and caught like a crazy move because it looked like it hit a resistance. If you look at uh the chart, you'll see that it hit that resistance and started dropping. And so I I grabbed a couple hundred out of the situation, but it looked like the US dollar is kind of stagnant right now. Because that push, if you look at the dollar right now, that push up from the, when it hit that uh, support, I caught it right there. That's when I jumped in. So I wanted you to just take a look at it and tell me, do you think it's going to come back down or it's going to keep going up? So I did have GBP USD coming down. Um, I wanted it to retest these lower areas. I don't know. So there's a lot of areas that it didn't retest. Um coming up like after it made this made this zone like that was a lot of money that it gave out to not try to come back and collect a lot of this but right. i think i i have to pretty much watch for the market to play out tonight but i do think because i did already establish that this is resistance and what i was looking for for was for the market to actually start uh retracing off of this exact zone so um, I agree with your setup, bro. I don't know how low it's going to come, but I agree with the push down because that was that's what I was looking for. I mean, I'm not trading it, but it hit a wall. I mean, it hit a ceiling at the top. Market drop has a possibility to uh, uh, create resistance, you know, just with off off of this break and retest. But it, it still looks like it hit a level of resistance and the market wants to come back down. Right. Oh, um, I think you're straight, man. All right. I think you're straight. Appreciate you. Anybody else? What y'all trading? So if y'all, what y'all trading out there? Let's look at gold real quick. I don't know what gold is trying to do. Selling us, I agree with that. So I was looking at US 30, S&P, all this stuff to come down. Um, I don't know what made me draw this line on US 30, but I had it up here and I know that that was a sell zone of mine, but I don't know why I drew this line. <laughs> so I think the same. Um, yeah, Nas had a resistance zone up here. Yeah, I think that was a fake out to draw buyers in. Remember, they got to take our money to make money. Draw buyers in, push this thing down. Who all on here? What you looking at for gold, Summer? Santana. Oh, she might be at work. I know some of y'all be coming on here at work. Yeah, that's all I'm looking at. Um, we'll just have to play it ear by ear. This is just going to be like a price action week. That's what I'm looking for. I'm not really generating an overall analysis besides like 
staying up to date with that news, like I said, that we got. Matter of fact, um, if you guys didn't know, this is something that Lee and Gray pointed out to me. I know they have like little news articles down here in our trading view at the bottom. Y'all can click those and kind of formulate your own bias based off the information that you're seeing or just gather some more information to make sure that there is no volatile news coming out while you're trying to enter the market at whatever time you're entering the market. You know what I'm saying? And some of this news is good because it was like over the weekend. So what I already what I always say, don't wait to start like gathering information on the market when the market's moving. Gather that information when the market's like not moving, pretty much. Like you got to do the back test work in order to make sense. That's pretty much how I was able to look at S and P. I did that like last week. And it play it paid up for us in the future. So um, I think that was another like a hundred pip drop or something like that. I gotta look at it or like 80 pip drop. So yeah, um, I'm looking for a thousand pips out of that. We'll see. Like I said, jump in, jump out. <laughs> that's funny. Never mind. That, that that's funny. Never mind. <laughs> but anyway, guys, yo, appreciate y'all. So Tuesday. We're going to go over Fibonacci. That's going to be more of like a, you know, classroom setting. Um, so, you know, if you are ask your questions, if you're confused about using Fibonacci, um, how to use it, if you're making mistakes with it, if you confuse, if you don't know what it's even used for, just ask your questions, all that, guys. And, um, yeah, I'll see you all Tuesday. So peace out. Make a lot of money. Be careful in your trades. Remember, it's only Sunday. We got the whole week ahead of us, but, um, and Wednesday, don't be in that market after 1030. So y'all be, y'all be careful, make a lot of money and let's win the day. All right, bro. All right.